Oh, uh, he's playing Wait, mid. What happened? I missed oh. it. Oh, did I see a mid mid? Did I just. Oh, man. Oh, where's my shot bus? Oh. oh. Uh, okay. okay, so Poco Lamb right. opting not to do his tried and true villager. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure how uh, how much we've seen of this Min Min before. Do you think this is a deliberate choice due to the matchup, or is he just trying to, you know, flex his Min Min in uh, Winter's Finals uh, here? It might be a little bit of both because I, from the from the matchup data that I've seen of Min Min and Snake, Min Min can kind of smoke uh, Snake when it comes to off stage game really hard. And even in neutral, it can be a little hard for Stank to get in, um, providing the right wall. But right now, Jeremiah is just racking up the damage, already at 130 <laughs> percent. And <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm playing zero to death. Right. That's, zero to yeah, death. That's a... <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Okay. Oh I was, no. Oh I was no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. And that grenade saved him. Yeah. Um. So. We see Pokemon going a lot for that grab, and that actually makes sense to me that that grab is, it has so much range, and I feel like it's also at the range where normally characters struggle to hit Snake. Um, so yeah, he's going for quite a bit, but great awareness from Jeremiah, recognizing that he's jumping a lot more. Now, of course, the mix-up game ends up becoming uh, using Min Min's other great zoning tools really to stuff good. out those jumps. But so far, Jeremiah is just playing around it very effectively, very solidly, and we're starting to see Pokalam get some rhythm going, but he already took such a hard hit from that first zero to death that um, this is... This, uh, depending on how this game goes, we might not see the Min Min in game two. Yeah, and right now I'm liking what Jeremiah is doing. He's cooking some of these grenades, he's taking his time, he's not trying to force an envelope, right? He knows he has the lead, and he's, del and he's delaying some of these options when he's up close with Min <laughs> That was cute. Yeah, uh, the, su the super jump, super jump, uh, while people are off stage, is pretty devastated. All right, great recovery there from Pokalam. But this is something where whenever you're playing a character who you might not be as familiar with, taking stocks is like, cause you can learn a character's overall neutral game pretty quickly, pretty effectively. But um, like you can see, <laughs> Jeremiah is no stranger to taking stocks with Snake. And he is sitting at 171% and honestly seems comfortable being there. Yeah, he seems pretty comfy. And these grabs are not doing much for Pokemon. He's been going for a lot of these grabs. And I'm pretty sure almost on every single grab attempt, he's going to punish, punish pretty hard. Um, I think at that that time, it might have been the uh, that he pummeled was the issue. Because if he had instated, if he had um, instantiated the grab right away, I think he would have had grab invulnerability. Yeah, but it, it's still like, it's he's throwing it out a lot. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know why he's doing it. I know in order for you to activate the dragon shot, you need to get a grab. So, but besides that, I'm not sure why he's throwing out a lot of these grabs. Um, he got stuck. Oh, oh, I didn't even know that the C4 was there, but clearly Pokalam did. Yeah, yeah, no, he got, he, yeah, he stuck him. He stuck him on a roll away. Pretty crazy. All right. Nice job there. I feel like, okay, so the, I was going to say that the, he had kind of conditioned him a little bit with that, with those grabs, and he was starting to, yeah, he's starting to catch him in the air. Um, but it's the sort of thing where. Playing that mix up, he has, he has to play the mix up game perfectly at this point. Because if Snake gets in one time, if he manages to get that one clean entry, then that probably will be it for him. Oh, great. That was good. Oh, yeah. he's living. What? He lived? I think he was, was that a. Okay, okay well. Bro. Yo, if, if Pokemon cheesed him, like if he did some back throw dragon shot nonsense, I would have. And Wait. I would have back in the chat. <laughs> oh my god. And leave me to solo commentate Min Min, uh, Min Min Snake. What was that? How did that kill him? Uh, that was... Over there? Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. A lot of these grab... He's been getting whiff punished pretty hard for that. That's really good yeah. stuff by Jeremiah. So he tried out the Min Min. It, by the end, it wasn't, you know, quite as dire, but I think there might be a decent chance that Pokalam would uh, elect to go his villager for game two. Yeah. 
Yeah, but this is a matchup that we've seen before in, um, on Xeno. Um, can't remember who the snake was. I, it might have been Sensei. Might have been Sensei and one of the. There are like three men that went you know, like in bracket the other day. Um, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that um, Sensei beat all the min mins that day. All the min mins that he played. So. All right, we're getting, we're queuing up into game two here. He is going to stay Min Min. So I, maybe he's, maybe he's sort of figuring out the matchup a little bit better, getting into more of a groove. I, I will say that the fact he has stayed Min Min maybe shows that he has some confidence that uh, we'll see if it pays off for him immediately in this game. It seems to be going pretty well. You know, game one was a zero to death. It's just a clean, clean streak from Jeremiah. But this time around, yeah, he seems to have gotten a sizable lead. Let's see if he's able to maintain it. Maybe convert it into a stock early, even. Yeah, and it also seems like Jeremiah is pretty is pretty comfortable in this matchup. Also, um, seems like he has like, at least some knowledge on how to get by the uh, extendo arms and yeah. What, one thing is that you notice where he's jumping. It feels like he's jumping in those sort of blind spots that Min Min can have. Oh. Great! He got out the, uh, I forget the name of it, but that wrecking the gigawatt. ball on the, the gigawatt. Yeah. The gigawatt arm, yeah. Yeah, um, making sure that that was the, the arm he I was, had. Oh, it's a megawatt, might be. There. 20, 20, 21 gigawatts? <laughs> Sorry, that's when, when he said that. That's not, now that I know that's not the name of it, that's what I think of. Um, oh, it's, a, it's a gigawatt for this, though. <laughs> Yeah, but right now, Pokemon up to early lead, and now this is where it's going to be hard for Jeremiah, because even in previous sets, we've seen him struggle to generate offense, and right now against Finman, uh, things can snowball pretty quickly. Yeah, using some of the, these crazy long-lasting hitboxes from Min Min, I, you know... I will, I'm ready, always ready to admit when I'm wrong because this Min Min pick actually seems to be doing what it needs to. Poco Lamb looking like he might even three stock in this game too. Granted, you know, he's at 130%, but based on the way he's been playing, I could very easily see uh, the end before he's able to do, like, before Jeremiah can answer. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, we haven't been seeing a lot of the Ram Ram. So the Ram Ram is like pretty much the chop from thing that, that she has. And, um,. That could mess up Snake pretty, pretty bad off stage, and a lot of characters pretty bad off stage. And it's the fastest option that he has. But she, he's been doing this mostly with the Dragon Shot and the Megawatt arm. And um, well, so he has been using the uh, that Chakra a lot in neutral when he's trying to stuff uh, his approaches. All right, finally managing to get that first stock off, but. Another healthy stock and uh, it quickly ends things. Pokalem uh, taking game two in very dominant fashion. Uh, I'm, was that a trend to continue though? Was, it, was that sus DI? Um, I, we didn't get a kill screen, so I kind of am assuming. I feel like that was a little bit. Yeah, that sus. was straight up. That was straight Ooh, up. Oh my god! But what the? Where's your compass? What the hell happened? I mean, that might be the get me to game three DI. What? I'm trying to look for like the the di the ring, but I don't see it. Did, did he... Oh, I see. Oh no, he's holding. It's going straight up. You see it? Are you sure that's just not the explosion? I I think that looks. Oh like yeah, 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 yeah. I do see it. Yeah, he, he's yeah. Okay. Yeah. God bless. Yeah, and also when you hold up, you get increased knockback, correct? Uh, yeah, is holding up thing? does increase your knockback. That is, yeah. that so is that was, still a thing, it's just that, not It was sus DI, times. but it was a sort of sus DI that wouldn't have, I don't think it would have made the, made the difference. Yeah. Surviving that up smash, I don't think would have given him the the, the juju in order to You know what's all, you that know all messed up about that? Um, his, that up smash reflected the grenade that Jeremiah dropped also, so he didn't even have to turn up for that. Yeah, imagine if the grenade had hit him though and he lived. Uh, but um, I love I love that. Anyway, uh, so we're going into game three here, and so far, an even start, which is the first time we've seen these two really uh have an even start. 
Oh, but maybe I spoke too soon. With that, look at how a single instance of stage positioning for Pokalam has converted to all of this damage. And even still, Jeremiah is not able to get out of the corner. That platform actually doing him a huge service, basically giving him stage control without him even having to lift a finger. Yeah, but and then even at that, Pokalam just immediately gets back to um, stage position. And Pokalam, the, the, the stage position that he's been holding, he's about maybe two character lengths away from the ledge, and he's not giving Jeremiah room to really pull grenade, or even generate like offense. Like, you'd have to make a hard commit to get out of the corner, and uh, Oakland is staying pretty true right now. Okay, I will say Jeremiah has definitely adapted to those, uh, the super jumps. He hasn't really been getting hit by that particular option in a while, but at the same time, he hasn't really, he, He's back on stage right now, but he has not been in neutral for at least a minute. Yeah, that, oh yeah, I was trying to try to shield. Um, probably would have taken that stuff. Almost assuredly. And just, I like that patient throwing out these safe moves that eventually will do the job that needs to be done. Poker Lamb, just the trend that we saw from that game too, absolutely continuing. He is dominating fashion right now. This Min Min choice working out fantastically. And it seems like the, a big part of it is he knows exactly what to be doing in this matchup. The way that he's constantly putting the pressure on Snake when he's recovering, when he can't get off the Ooh. ledge. Oh, but this could be a big turnaround. He needs to capitalize off of this Jeremiah with only slight stage positioning, but can he actually turn it into something big? And I, I was just about to say, um, it, in that position of Snake was in, it's gonna be pretty uh, tough to get back to stage, but he was pretty fortunate to get that roll in, right? And even at there, he's, try, he's trying to roll in sometimes, and it's almost like a 50-50 gamble, trying to roll in on Pokemon's pressure, and it seems like he's not really sure <laughs> what, like, uh, what to do, and he's just kind of gambling on, like, if I roll in, I can get some damage. If I don't, I might die, who cares? Yeah. Interesting. So Pokalam is starting to actually be more aggressive towards uh, him when he's in the corner. And now it's starting to approach with down tilts, starting to get up more in his face. Uh, it doesn't seem to quite be working out that well. Oh, he's sitting on C4. Yeah, didn't get actually get the chance to detonate it. Though. Wow. And, oh my God. Okay, that for everything. Yeah, and like you were saying earlier, this chakra, the um, the Ram Ram has been netting him a lot of work in neutral right now. Um, kind of stuffing a lot, stuffing a lot of jumps in neutral by Jeremiah, but Jeremiah taking that stock. Let's see if he can get a little bit of momentum. Already 30% on the board. A couple grenade pulls. Ooh. Okay, tries to get a conversion off of that grenade himself. Pokalam once again in the driver's seat when it comes to stage control. Look at the way he's able to push, put on pressure, force him into shield, and he's always aware of that C4. He hasn't been get caught by it unawares at once, I think. So, and there's the grab. You know, he's been, like, that's the thing, though, because of the range on that grab, he's been holding on to that particular card, and... Yeah, the, yeah, the that Jeremiah's just instant. This is looking really great. Yo, that was okay. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie. That that was pretty good. That was pretty good coming from Jeremiah. That that duck into <laughs> jump behind Roland, <laughs> and that grenade. I like the up smash because that up smash reflects. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Missed the ledge there. That's gonna be Jeremiah going down one two. And Pokalam, I, it feels like... So I do think that a part of it is he started off that game with a huge lead. You know, managed to get really good damage, managed to take stage control and maintain it. And so this isn't the sort of thing where it's like, oh, I don't see a path of victory for Jeremiah. Because if he manages to be the one to... You know, if he manages to be the one getting stage control, getting early damage, then uh, it might not be quite so possible for Pokalam to execute this game plan of his. So I, the very start of game four, like the very beginning of it, is going to be huge for both players. Uh, so we'll see how these first, I would say like 30 seconds shape up, because I think that it's good. The, I'm not going to say the match is decided in the first 30 seconds, but whoever is behind when it, like when that particular timer runs, um, they're, you know, they're gonna have a complete lack of control, it seems.
Yeah, um, it, it just seems like uh, both characters have or do very well with momentum. So, you know, whichever character gets the early lead seems to trend towards the easier time going down in the games. Uh, also, I would like to say it's just, it, it just seems like Pokemon. Pokemon, um, his, his gameplay is pretty simple, right? His game plan is pretty simple. He can think out, um, wait till he jumps, and air him with the Ram Ram, and try to throw him off stage and shoot him with the Dragon Shot, right? Jeremiah seems yeah. to, it seems to be a little bit more complicated on Jeremiah's end. Um, it just seems to be like, okay, I need to find out the rhythm, I need to find out his patterns, I need to find a way to get in, I need to the grenades a little bit, right? There's a lot of stuff going on right now for Ooh. Jeremiah to try to consider. The movement there was so sick. I was about to comment on how I think the Lilat pick is actually great. A, the, I think the slanting platforms might help him out in terms of avoiding some of those, uh, you know, those uh, arms hits. But then also the platforms give him a little bit of coverage, a little bit of alternate angles of attack. And as we saw right there, he managed to thread the needle. But unfortunately, even though he threaded the needle, he wasn't able to get a huge capitalization off. And considering how much work he has to do to get a single hit, like. He needs to be taking every hit and managing to basically, I don't know, finish line it every single time. Because <laughs> otherwise he's going to be down 110% and forced to approach like this. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, I do think Lila also helps Jeremiah, right? Because um, you could bounce the grenades off of the wedges, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Um, Dang. You ever die from across the stage? <laughs> you ever just explode from a Lilat away? Yeah, um, and right now, uh, Jeremiah's gonna try to land. Min Min's, Min -min's doing, been doing a pretty good job of nairing and up airing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, the, the, I'm loving the way that Pokalam is varying up his timing, just making this look like a brutal, unpleasant time for Jeremiah. Okay, finally manages. He read that, that, he read that grab attempt. He needs this edge guard, or at the very least, to. Strong ledge trap here. Oh, ooh, ooh. okay. He. Oh, no. That's oh tough. no. That was definitely that was definitely a B reverse grenade onto ledge, and he got another um another side beat that sucks. All right, Jeremiah though seems like he's cleaning up his recoveries a bit, managing to get back to the ledge pretty easily there. Yeah. So when whenever um. Whenever Pokalem is in that particular position, it seems like his game plan is getting to the middle wow. platform because it's hard for him to actually hit him there. And, oh, look at this, that, that aggressive back air to get back, but 66% he's already taken. He needs to, he needs to take out this uh, Pokalem, his first life. Yeah, and taking that, <laughs> taking that at 188. Um, yeah, this, this is just a pretty uh, high mountain for Jeremiah to climb. Uh, but we'll see. You know, anything's possible, right? Yeah, well, let's not forget Snake's crazy damage out, but I mean, one downer just did, like, how much damage? No, so, yeah. oh. Solid and 20. he's not getting caught by those, um, those big edge guards. Yeah, and, um, something that Pokemon hasn't been doing that I've just been seeing in stock was all these grabs, right? Like the first game that Pokemon lost, we saw a whole bunch of weird grabs come out from him. Um,. And if Jeremiah could find a way to maybe try to bait him into more of those crabs, uh, we can maybe see a turn around. Yeah, it was it was the it was the uh, it was the macro conditioning. By going for all of these grabs, game one, uh, he then would never shield. He would constantly be jumping for the rest of the set. It's all it's macro planning. Uh, that wasn't true, but you know what? <laughs> Pokemon I mean, didn't he read that. the option right there. I mean, okay, we were talking about how this was a little bit of a done deal, but yeah, Jeremiah think... is alive and kicking, and this is, uh, this is Pokalem's last stock. Yeah, and, yeah, and, you know, one thing, right, Snake does have a strong advantage, so maybe if he can get something going right now, and take another hit, and, you yeah. know. Really good from Pokalem. He switched to the, uh, the, uh, Megawatt. What? You know, I was just saying Megawatt. Yeah, that, he switched to the Megawatt because one hit from that would have, you know, that was all he needed. He went, he, he, it, at that point, it was no longer about small chip damage. It was about getting that meaningful hit. And then finally, that neutral air 
finds its mark, catches uh, Jeremiah dropping shield, and brings Pokalem to grand finals winner's side. All right? I didn't yeah. miscount games there, did I? No. Oh, no, 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 no. you're right. No, you're right. Yeah, no. I was just, yeah, no, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, uh, we were questioning that pick after game one because uh, uh, he was doing some weird stuff. But uh, he got his act together in the later games. He stopped doing a lot of these weird grabs that we were seeing in game one, a lot of these weird unwanted grabs. Um, he just started playing his game. He started uh, pacing and spacing himself accordingly. Um, he was just controlling the pace of the game. Like I said before, like I said before this set started, um, even though I didn't expect him to pick Min Min, uh, Pokalem has been setting the pace in almost all this uh, games he's been playing. It seems like he doesn't get really sped up by anybody, even if a person is playing a range game with the lead. Um, it just seems like Pokalem, even at that, can, is used to playing off his back foot.